Are you familiar with the story of the two children who come across a house in the forest filled with food and the creepy old woman who lives there and feeds children, or rather feeds on children? Gretel and Hansel is the new retelling of that classic tale, with this time, though, the sister taking the lead. Is this a grim fairy tale, or is it just simply grim? A sister and brother, hungry and homeless, set out to find work and food, and they come across this house in the middle of the forest that just has an abundance of food on the table. There's also a creepy old woman who lives there. Sophia Lillis stars as Gretel. You may recognize her as Beverly Marsh from It. Alice Krieg is also in this, and for fans of the OA, you're going to recognize her as Prairie's mom. She's playing the creepy old woman in our tale. Gretel and Hansel is trying to be kind of an art house film. It's messing with the aspect ratio a little bit, kind of like we've seen in some recent movies, like The Lighthouse or even The Nightingale. This one, it's not quite square, but it's also not just widescreen either. Just a little bit is cut off of the sides. Shots in this look really great. The framing is just well done. A lot of it is everything perfectly centered. Think Wes Anderson in his films, just everything centered and equally balanced. Now it doesn't do that all of the time, but it still maintains a really good look and feel to everything. The cinematography is beautiful in this because there are a lot of very close up shots. There are also a lot of very far away shots where you get to experience the landscape. You get to see the forest and as they traipse through different areas. The concept, just like the source material, is pretty dark. But unfortunately, it doesn't deliver an ominous feel to the movie. It does have the potential for scares and unease, but it's pretty lackluster for the majority of the film. Now, to the film's credit, it doesn't use jump scares. It uses more sound and just imagery to instill, or at least try to instill, some fear, some foreboding to this. And I appreciate that it doesn't go for the cheap jump scares. We've seen that so many times, and really everybody's just tired of it because it it doesn't last. It, it's not true horror. It just kind of, you go like that for a second, then you move on. Whereas I want something that's going to disturb me. I want something that's going to really bother me to my core, and it's going to leave me with this feeling well after the credits have rolled. There's one thing that really hampers the sinister feel to the story, and that's the use of voiceover. Sophia Lillis's character, Gretel, has a lot of narration as the story goes along, and it comes in the form of voiceover. Now, at the very beginning of the film, it's used, and I think it's done really well, because it sets up history, it sets up tone, it sets us up for what is going, or where we're going in the story, but then it can end there. The, the rest of it, when it happens, not only is the dialogue kind of juvenile and basic, but it really pulls you out of the story itself. It's just like, whoa, what? okay, now we're getting this, versus letting the ambiance, letting the score, letting just everything that we see be very unsettling to us. Let it draw us in and just hook us that way. And then the, the, it's unnecessary, too. The, the dialogue isn't necessary. We don't need that. We don't need to be spoon-fed every little bit that's going on. And I would argue that for the very end of the film also. There's more voiceover to that, and it didn't need to be there. I think the film would have been stronger had they reduced or removed, really, yeah, just removed, all of the voiceover except for what was at the very beginning of the film. Another thing that I did like in this is the use of perspective. I mean, it just sets you off just a little bit because sometimes it's at very odd angles, whereas you're looking down on something or you're looking up or even kind of to the side, and it really puts things out of scale. And so there are points where Gretel is going down a stairway and it, it, it seems massive. Like there's just, I don't know, maybe 50 feet of stair that she is descending. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. And I just like that. And then also some of the ways that you see some of the characters makes them look either much bigger or much smaller than they actually are. And what that does is it just messes with my mind. I don't know exactly what I can trust. I like that because I'm now the unreliable witness. I mean, I'm seeing what's going on, but I can't tell if it's true or not. And that adds to my confusion, but in a positive way. The third act does save the film just a bit. It really begins at that point to embrace the darkness that it's been threatening to show us, that you felt looming the entire time, but just didn't really deliver at any point until we get to the third act. As the climax builds 
it really does get disturbing. And you're like, ooh, that's, wow, that's dark. And even though I know what the source material is, I may not have been paying attention to it. I, for me personally, I was just caught up in the film. I was trying to be frightened. I was trying to be terrified. Or I was trying to be disturbed. Maybe that's even better. I, I didn't, I, at no point did I get like a scared feeling or even like frightened or terror, or anything like that. But I wanted something that was going to bother me, that it was going to make me uncomfortable. And it didn't do that until towards the third act. Now, there was one little brief moment when that was because of imagery where it did bother me. But then the story itself, as the film wrapped up, that's where it got me. And it was like, ooh, yeah, that, thank you for adding this or for keeping this, for pointing it out, for really just diving into it and going full bore with it. Because now I can definitely feel this unease, this, what I wanted to feel up until this point, but now at least I get it here. I was surprised actually by the disturbing imagery that was shown because this is a PG-13 movie. Uh, they, they actually got away with showing a lot without showing a lot. It was more of just, I mean, there was a scene and it was gross, but other than that, it's now more of the mental imagery that begins and what I, what I envision and what I picture and what I build for myself that really starts to bother me. Despite the third act and some of the use of imagery, I was kind of bored at this. And not because it was slow, but just because it wasn't building that tension, that darkness, that foreboding throughout the rest of the film. That I just kind of felt myself going along with it. And it's only 87 minutes. So it, I mean, they really could, they don't have a lot of time to work with in there. I mean, it could have been longer. I'm glad it wasn't because they, it just was lacking all of that, that depth to, to make me disturbed. But I just wish they would have put something else in there that would have kept me more invested or more just uneasy as it goes along. The one thing that really made me chuckle in this, and I don't know exactly the year that this is set in, I'm going to say, now this is a wide range, it's in between the 1400s and the 1700s. There you go. If you know what it is, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, you can point it out in the comments if you want, but it's kind of unimportant because the fact is that at one point, Hansel and Gretel are going through the forest and they don hats. And those hats, I swear, came out of the 1920s or right before the, you know, the early 1900s, right up to the 1920s. They were so out of place. And then I don't even know where they were carrying them because up until this point they did, it's not like they had pockets and everything that they were holding this in. It was just, it was very weird, very odd, very out of place, but I kind of laughed at it. I think if they had gotten rid of the voiceover and exploited the dark imagery throughout, they could have built up the tension and not really let anything drop, that they could have just kept building and building and building upon it, this could have been a really good horror film. If you see this on a discount day or really wait till it's on streaming, I think you're going to be okay. I am curious though if it's going to feel even less menacing if you watch it at home. That's still not an endorsement to rush right out and see it in the theater. There's no sex, nudity, or profanity. There is violence and gruesome imagery. I give Gretel and Hansel two and a half out of five couches. So what's your favorite fairy tale? Mine is Snow White and Rose Red. Let me know what yours is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.